boys and girls. I'm so glad you were able to join us tonight for Celebrity Readers. Um, we have something kind of unusual tonight. Uh, years ago when I was growing up, there used to be a program and it was called Romper Room. And what Romper Room did, it was a, a, a lady and her name was Miss Jean. And she used to have a magic mirror. And she used to hold the magic mirror and she would look out and she would see the children in the audience. She was very, very smart. Uh, I've looked many places, including um, antique places and yard sales, and I have never found a magic mirror. So what we're going to have to do, since I can't find the mirror, is just say hello back and forth. I want to say a special hello to Quinn and to Jacob. And should you guys want to have your names mentioned on the program, Please uh, feel free to stop me at Garetti's or if I'm in the supermarket or uh, the grandparents if, or parents. If you have time, just write a note, uh, attention celebrity readers to the Millbury Public Library, and that's on Elm Street. And just tell me the name of the child that you'd like us to recognize, and we'd be happy to do that. However, today we have a very special, she's a big girl. She's very nice, a big and her name is Linda DeFutis. Linda, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I bet you didn't think you were a big girl. No. Well, I'm big. Be, be, uh, big versus kids. <laughs> right. Is that what you mean? Yes, that's what okay. I mean. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, what it is is um, Celebrity Readers is a program where uh, people come on, and they usually read other people's books. And today, I can't believe you're reading your own book. Yes. So what started you on this path to, to become an author? Well, I was always interested in writing. And, and basically, I wrote poetry a lot. And then I started to write essays. And then uh, how it happened, it's a funny story. I went to my writing group, and I didn't have anything that night. And I go, I know, when I did student teaching, I had this lesson, and it was about the shop vowels. I'm going to bring that. And so I brought it to the group, and everyone really liked it. And Lisa said, you have to make it into a book, and that's how it happened. So now you're saying Lisa. Is Lisa, Lisa Shea is the facilitator of our writing group, the Sutton Writing Group in Sutton, Mass. Now when do they meet? Do they meet They monthly? meet once a month on the second Thursday of the month. Yeah, and is there a specific space where they, where they meet? Uh, in the library, Sutton Library. It's Sutton a very library. small library, so it's kind of quaint and very, you know, what do you call that word? Um, you know, yeah. like uh, it's comfortable and it's, yeah, uh, it's I know it's like not cozy. Is that the cozy, word I want? Cozy, but that's yeah, not the that's word not I the want, word, yeah. but that's what I mean. Yeah. You know, it's a small, tight-knit group. <laughs> yeah, it's a small, tight-knit group and yeah. everyone gets to know each other and yeah. everyone shares what they're working on. A lot of the work is done online, but when we have our meetings, everyone goes around and we share what we're working on, ask questions, ask for feedback. So. And that's how that so works. So that must be helpful to, Very to get helpful. another perspective from someone else. Very helpful. Yeah. And sometimes we'll read what we're working on and get feedback from the other members of the group. Yeah. I, I do like the Sutton Library. I've been there quite a few times. And uh, one time I, I hit a book sale. Oh, wow. And what a book sale. I mean, there was so much going on. And across the way at the Common, they had a, a I don't know if it was a flea market or what it was, but yeah. there was ice cream and people and oh, just wow. music and so much going on. It's, oh, wow. it's a fun place. Yeah, it um, is. A Sutton Common's very pretty, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's nice. I, I, I've got to think of the name of it now. I'm, I'm putting myself out there. There's a wonderful Whittier Farm. Oh, Whittier Farm, oh, yeah. The oh, little yeah. store that they yeah, have. Yeah, they have everything homemade there right. and everything. Yeah. And it's no bigger than the studio. Right. And, but yet, everything that you like, whether it's pies or mm -hmm. pizza or jams, anything. Oh, and everything. the pastry and the, the, I just like to go to, to, to look around. And right. in the summer when you have the corn and, and the vegetables right, too. Right. My goodness. Yeah, We're getting a, our first a, taste of summer. It's a great place. <laughs> it really is. It is. It's fun. Well, it's, Sutton has a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. So now you mentioned that you uh, did student teaching. Did, mm -hmm. you, did you teach? Yes. I went, well, I went to um, Anna Maria College way back when. And um, I got a degree in uh, elementary ed, K to 8. But then when I was a junior in college is when seven, Chapter 766 passed, which required all um, classrooms to integrate special needs children. So I also have a degree in moderate special needs. We had to take special courses and do part of our student teaching in special needs. So my certification is K to 8 in moder moder uh, moderate special needs. But I graduated way back in 1975. 
Ooh, so you're <laughs> retired, right? You're not, you're oh, yeah, not I'm still retired. teaching? I'm retired. You must but have I said. did talk, well, I, I did a number of things. I didn't just teach. Um, when I got out, it, there weren't really many teaching jobs, so I did permanent sub jobs, and I worked for, um, in the, it was called the LAMP <coughs> program, Labor Laboratory Approach to Mathematics program. I did that. I did day-to-day -day subbing. Then I was a permanent sub for learning disabilities. Wow, so and then I went back, then I, I left teaching, and I worked at the Pharmacom Gas for 17 years. And then when I left there, I went back to teaching as a reading tutor. And also I worked at the um, private Goddard School in Northrow oh, okay. as the first kindergarten teacher there. And it was all the kids that missed the cutoff. Yeah. You know, they have a certain cutoff for their certain age. Date, yeah. So uh, it was all those kids that missed the cutoff but had to go somewhere because the mothers were working, whatever. So I was the first kindergarten teacher there, and the one, it was the one in Northboro because they have, they have one in Auburn, and they have them all around the country. But, um, so I taught two years there, and I taught 10 years as a reading tutor in the Worcester Public Schools. Oh, so did you travel as a reading tutor, or did you well, stay no, in a particular school? Well, no, stayed at one school. Um, one school I was at like two years, another school I was at six years, another school I was at two years, six, seven, eight, yeah, another school I, I was at two. I would think that'd be hard. I, I, I know for the children, it, you know, when they're in one school and they have to move to another, some adapt very no, well. No, but I just but stayed at one school. When you, yeah. when you were a reading tutor, you get assigned, assigned to one school for the year. Okay, now did you have specific classes within the school? or did Well, you what we did is, as reading tutors, we took groups. Like, I might have five groups a day or four groups a day, and it was individualized, so it was groups of, um, you know, from four to six children at a time. Oh, okay. And focused on reading and trying to get them to read better. Right. I'll tell you a funny, um, my husband answered the phone when, in one of our conversations. And I said, oh, I says, Linda's going to do a, a program on, on owl sounds. And he stopped and he looked at me and he goes, what? <laughs> I said, I think she's an expert on owls. He goes, no, it's vowels. <laughs> I went, oh! <laughs> I didn't know you. I, I thought you were, uh, you know, somebody that did things with the sciences. And no, no, no. I was like, vowels? <laughs> I was waiting for yeah. an owl. <laughs> I meant well. Yeah, I'm not a science person, really. No. Um, Actually, I had a brother who was a scientist, so, but, so it makes me think of him. But, um, well, basically, when you start to read, you have to learn, start with the sharp vowel sounds. Okay. And then you learn the consonant sounds, and then you learn how to put them together and make sharp words. And that's how you, you read the sharp words that are very phonetic. And later, you learn sight words, which you can't sound out. You have to remember what they look like, and that's why they're called sight words. Okay. And, you know, like, for instance, the word they, T-H-E-Y can't really sound that out. Right. Other word, the. Other word, word um, trying to think, um, only, um, one, O and E. Those are all sight words. There's so many words, though, that sound the same or mean, the, you know. Oh, yeah. Those are. You know, there, there, there. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and it's so. It's homonyms. Those, I think they're called homonyms. They sound the same, but they have different meanings. They have different meanings, yeah. Yeah. I'm excited, up. Uh, how long have you had the book written? How? Uh, ooh, I'm trying ooh. to think now. It's only been about maybe six months, something six like that. Months. It's been written. Now, if somebody wanted uh, the book, is how would they get it? Would they get it at? Uh, well, they could contact you, and you can contact me, and I could get get it to them. I could meet them at the Millbury Library and give it to them. I just ordered um, 20 copies of the black and white, and I have about um, six or eight of the. I mean. 20 copies of the color, and right. I have six or eight of the black and white. Okay. So I have, you know, some right now. And, um, and are they, or they can or they can order them on Amazon.com Amazon directly. Okay. You know, right. they just put in Alpha Land by Linda DeFutis, and it will come up. And I don't think the colored version is on there yet because it's just getting okayed because they had to make sure that, you know, like, for instance, my name, is my name high enough? Or, um, like, you know, they look at things like, is the picture far enough over? Things like that. Oh, so okay. So these are the first ones I got. But it had to go back and four little, four little things had to be changed. Like, my name was one thing that had to be raised up. Okay. Do I, do I see a, a, a bookworm coming out of the Yes, yeah, a little bookworm, that? yeah. 
Now, did, did you, were you able to choose the copy, or how did that work? Um, well, Lisa, who's our facilitator, Lisa Shea, giving her all the credit, she did this cover, and I don't know, she's very... It's adorable. She went online, and she got the picture, and she did the cover. Yeah. And even the background has little... Yeah, I can see the little stick figures. Jump ropes, yeah. stick figures, yeah. you know, things yeah. kids like, um, rainbow, sun, uh, you know, crayons, school bus, all things kids, beach ball. It says so, here, I'm going to steal your thunder for a minute. It okay. says, once upon a time in Alpha Land, which is this, yep. lived letter people. Right. Some were tall. These were the capital letters. Some were short. These were the small letters. They all had very funny ways which they became known for. Come join us in a delightful tale where letters love to exercise, hold hands with their friends, and together form words to make learning to read fun. I'm, I'm in, come on, I want you to read it to us. Read it? Okay. This is excellent. All right, Alpha Land, a story about short vowel sounds. And the dedication is to all my former reading students and to future beginning students striving to become better readers. Excellent. Once upon a time in Alpha Land lived letter people. Some were tall. These were the capital letters. And girls and boys, they have the little faces. How cute is that? <laughs> the eyes. <laughs> yeah, they do have faces. <laughs> um, some were short. These were the small letters. There were many, many more boys in Alpha Land than girls. There were, as a matter of fact, 21 boys. They were the consonants, or all the letters that weren't vowels. There were only five girls who were the short vowels. They were Little Miss A, Little Miss E, Little Miss I, Little Miss O, and Little Miss U. They all had very funny ways, which they became known for. Because of their funny ways, they got new names. Little Miss A became Little Miss Achoo, because all she did all day was sneeze. Achoo, achoo, achoo. By bedtime, she was so tired and her nose was so sore from sneezing that all she could do for her last sneeze was to say, ah. From then on, Little Miss Achoo became known for her ah sound. Little Miss E became Little Miss Exercise because all that she did was exercise all day with her arms saying, exercise, exercise, exercise. You know she was getting very thin and weak so that by bedtime all she could say before she hopped into bed was, eh. <laughs> Little Miss I was very funny for all she did all day was itch. She became Little Miss Itch. Itch, itch, itch. By the end of the day, she was so red from itching and rubbing, she'd jump into the bathtub and all the itches would go down the drain, except for one that would get stuck and say, eh. She then became known for her eh sound. <laughs> Little Miss O loved olives, just black olives. If her mom tried to give her green olives, she would cry and say, ah. Do I have to eat those? You know I don't like green olives. When she sobbed because she was mad, instead of sobbing wah, 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 she would sob ah, 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 until her mom got her the black olive she asked for. The last, <clears throat> the last vowel, Little Miss U, became Little Miss Umbrella. She was always hiding from the sun that wanted to burn her. She carried her umbrella everywhere. She at times opened it indoors, though she knew it was bad luck, but she was afraid the sun might peek in the windows and hurt her. She was becoming very pale because, you see, she was always under the umbrella. Under, under, under. By the end of the day, she hid under her bed covers closed the shade so the sun couldn't hurt her, and said, Ah, uh, I'm safe. Then to remind herself, she repeated, Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. By the time they were older, all the Little Miss Vowels grew out of their funny ways and made friends with the consonants. The consonants asked to be called by their full names are, are the first letter sounds of their names. 
The vowels had so many names to remember that they just used the consonants' first letter so sounds when calling them. They kept lists of their names and sounds on big paper in their rooms to re see and read. They did not want to call their friends the wrong names. On large papers were printed B for Ben, C for Cal, D for Dan, F for Fudd, G for Gus, H for Hal, J for Jed, K for Ken, L for Len, M for Mick, N for Ned, P for Pell, Q for Quinn, R for Rod, S for Sam, T for Ted, V for Val, W for Will, X for Zan, Y for Yen, and Z for Zed. Now, I just read that saying the letter names, but if you wanted to substitute, you could say B for Ben, K for Cal, D for Dan, F for Fud, G for Gus, and H for Hal. So that way you're just saying the sound of the first letter of their names. Okay. And that is the consonant sound. And and they're all listed in the book in order, and it's all the letters that are not the vowels A, E, I, O, U. All the remaining letters are the count consonants. So after the vowels made fun, the uh, vowels made friends with the consonants. Little Miss A made friends with the boy consonants C and T, and they held hands to make the word cat. Oh, I see that now. Okay. Oh, that's <laughs> Little E made friends with the boy consonants H and N, and they held hands to make the word hen. Little Miss I made friends with the boy consonants P and G, and they held hands to make the word pig. Uh -huh. Little Miss O made friends with the boy consonants D and G, and they held hands to make the word dog. And last of all, Little Miss U made friends with the B and G boy consonants and they held hands to make the word bug. Before long, all the girl vowels and boy consonants were friends. They all made words together and shared sounds, so that there were many short A, E, I, O, and U words made when the vowels and boy consonants held hands. Alpha Land was a fun place to play and learn new words. How excellent is that? So this, I, I'm going to read this part, girls and boys. It says, about this book, this book grew out of a lesson plan on short vowel sounds. I did back in 1974. How cool is that? When I was student teaching for a class of second graders. I feel the association of the letter pictures with their sounds and story form will help memory aid to learning. It's true. You see it, and you can, you can see the cat. And yeah. I'll let yes. you read about yourself, though, so that I don't steal your time. About Linda DeFutis, that's me. <laughs> I am a beginning writer um, who has written mostly poetry in the past, but I'm venturing out into essays and short stories. This is my first children's book. It is in short story form, as is usually a child's first exposure to reading, and therefore, I hope, through its familiar, familiar that word I have trouble with, familiarity, familiarity <laughs> successful as a teaching tool. Uh, so it really is a teaching tool, and, and it gives the basics of, yeah, of how to Yeah, it's just very off. basic of how you put, you, con you know, shot vowel sounds with the consonants and put them together to make words. And it's in a story form and gives an example of five books so the kids, c you know, children can relate to that and how it's done. And you can try different ones. You can try two other consonants with, an, with the same, like you can put an O in the middle and try B and G and have bog or whatever you want to do. Put an A and B bag. And right, so, whatever. Yeah, so the parents would be able to read it and then stop and then change the, change the words per se. Right. As long as they retain the vowel change, sound. Right, the sound in the middle and you can change the consonants and make different words. Now, how does it work? Uh, when do children, what, is it first grade? I mean, mine's, yeah. my child's well, pretty grown up. I, was, <laughs> I had shown this book to, um, uh, we had, uh, I don't know what, what its title is. That's awful. Um, the head of the reading tutors in Worcester, and he had said you could read it even to um, preschool before they enter kindergarten. Oh, which is really nice. Yeah, just to give them a little 
little heads up. And I did yeah. go to St. Agnes Guild in Worcester and read it to the children there. Yeah. So, you know, and they seem to respond well to it. Now, is it, I can remember singing, you know, A E I O U. Yeah. You know, the, the, the chat alphabet. and everything. Yeah, yeah, the chat. And also, I'm writing another book because um, someone said, and what about the why? So I'm writing a book which is why this why says why am I the sometimes vowel? Ah. So I am writing a book about that, and I'm also writing a book about the consonant sounds, just the consonant sounds alone. Come to the consonant parade. They're both written. They're both in the works to be made into little books like this. That's excellent. So then we'll have you know you'll have a, the regular vowels that you see all the. I mean when I was um, teaching. Uh, I would always see chats with just A E I O U, yeah. and never the Y in it. But a number of people said, "And sometimes Y," and I always, you know, remembered that too. Yeah. So um, I did a little research on that and as to when you would use the Y and how it changes. There's a lot of rules with the Y. It changes from you know the shot I sound to a long E sound, and there's rules for everything. So it's a little. Um, a little bit confusing, but I make a chat in the book to try to clarify it. Yeah. So what do you, I was going to say, what are you going to do in the future? But I can already see you, you've got two books yeah, in I the works. Yeah, I have two. I have um, why, why says, why am I the sometimes vowel and come to the consonant parade. And it's just, um, that one is going to have the consonant sounds and they're going to be highlighted so that you can read them. In other words, um, Say, for instance, I, I don't remember the words exactly, but say it says Cali, the cowboy, can. So all those C's would be highlighted, so you're repeating the ca sound, and Cuss you know, yeah. and then it would be all the vowel, all the consonants will be highlighted like that. So it will be visual and so they'll reading. be practicing too. Practicing. How they do it. Right. I know usually when I used to read to myself. Yeah, and I have we have a, a great artist. Um, my advisor went online and she got an artist from the Philippines who put the hands together to make words in this. And he's going to be, he's a great artist, he's going to be the one that's going to, you know, like I have that they're, they're going to wear clothes that goes with their consonant sounds, like yeah. C for a cowboy hat. And yeah. he's going to draw those. He's going to illustrate them somehow. So I'm dying to see what he does, actually. Oh, I bet it's going to be, if this is any indication, it's going right. to be very well done. Right. Yeah. So. So now, do you still do any poetry, or you're still you're just tied uh, up I do right poetry now with the too. kids? Yeah, I do poetry. Um, I I did do a poetry book too that I wrote. It's called Life Is Beautiful, and it was about my personal experience with breast cancer. Oh my! And it was po poems that I wrote during my short I say short journey because a lot of people have a long, much longer journey. And um, I was one of the lucky, lucky ones that found it in stage one. So yeah. it's just about my feelings, people I met along the way, family members who have supported me. But I do find poetry to be therapeutic. If some, like I had a friend that died terrible of um, Huntington's disease. And um, I would just write how I felt. And it is therapeutic. But I do write happy things, too. Like yeah. I write about, I wrote about my mother's birthday. I wrote a big, long narrative about her life. And I wrote, write about things that come up that, you know, I might, they might interest me. Or, you yeah, know, Something you enjoy. Something I enjoy. Uh, Lisa, uh, again, our advisor, is going to have um, us do a, a compilation of, the members in the group, whoever wants to be in it, and it's going to be about animals next year. <laughs> so I'm going to do animal poetry, and I did I did one on an elephant so far, and one on a monkey, that's and one on a bird. That's all I have so far. But so that's I do good. that kind of stuff for poetry too, um, or anything that sparks my interest. I wrote a, a poem for my professor, of uh, because well it was a long story, but we had a. Um, Poetry art pairing at the Worcester Library, and I had her read, you know, look at my poem that I got from someone else, right. and I asked her, "What do you think I should write?" I'm paying, or you know, I had my ideas, she had her ideas, and we kind of, yeah. you know, fed each other's ideas. And I said, "I'm going to write a poem about you." Oh, you have better things to do. Oh, but I wrote goodness. a poem, so I wrote a poem about her, and then I wrote a poem about what is art. Yeah. So things like that. Something yeah. comes up and I want to write a poem, I'll write it. 
Yeah, I have a so. cousin whose wife uh, is very talented. And years ago, uh, she started making Christmas cards. Oh, and yeah. And the cards were long. And she read a poem. And she had a poem inside. And the last one I received, she even did the outside. Oh, wow. All, all hand done. And wow. in the back, there's a little note that says they were in, on vacation in Seekonk. And she saw this and made her think of that. And, and we so look forward to those cards. Because, and they're all different. Oh, you know, well, you'd yeah. think there'd be one a year, but that's not what she does. She, she tailors them to the people. I, I, I don't so know where she, she finds So does she send the them at Christmas? Yes, yeah, she sends them at Christmas. She makes them all year long and sends them at Christmas. So you get a different one every, every year. year. Oh, that's, yeah. that's, and I've that's saved a cool them all. idea. I yeah. should do that. I yeah. should try that. Yeah. I mean, well, it's, it's something it's different. different, and, and you look forward Unusual. to it, yeah, yeah, and you save them. And, um, and one of, well, I can remember one when we were first married. Now, that's been a long time. She did a tree, and the tree had a heart with my husband and my initials oh, in it when we got married. I mean, how nice. Just something that you, you treasure, you know. I did, um, for that poetry art pairing, I did two. What, what it was is someone would paint a picture, and I had to write a poem for their picture. Okay. Then I painted a picture, and someone and had to write a poem for my picture. Um, I mean, yeah, it was, it was yeah, back, and, back forth. and forth. Yeah. And um, I did write a poem about my nephew and his wife getting married, and she painted a picture to go with that. Yeah. And then she had one of a woman standing at a table, and it was in the morning, and she had like a, a glass door opened, and there was the waves in the background. So I did a poem to go with that one. And then someone else did a poem about um, a leaf that she found that was so beautiful and how it reminded her of this and that. And so I did a painting to go with her leaf poem. And then I did a painting of a, a Christmas teapot and a teacup and, you know, like um, some holly and, you know, the tablecloth. And she wrote a poem to go with that. So it was kind of... It was very interesting. Yeah. You know, we're going to do it again in another two years. It's a nice idea. Well, I think the time is flying by there. Wow. I, I, don't, I don't know where the time goes, but I do want to give you something from the children of Millbury. Sutton, me? You're giving me Grafton, something? Grafton, yes, Shrewsbury and Worcester. Oh, what a riot. Yeah, well, oh my God. Celebrity Readers has their own chocolatier. Um, oh, what a riot. Todd, yeah, Todd Willette from the uh, candy shop on, uh, uh, oh, yeah, uh, on Main Street right here in Millbury. Oh, yeah. He... Uh, he makes us all kinds of good stuff. So from the, oh from the children to you. Oh, isn't and, that sweet? And thank you it's so, so much cute. for coming. It's so cute. I love it. I'm going to put it out. I'm ha and I'm having an Easter dinner at my house, so I have to put this out now. There it is go. so adorable. Thank you so much. Thank the You're children. Welcome. And thank you for coming. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye, Quinn. Bye, Jacob. You have any children you want to say bye to? Uh, bye, Annabelle. Bye, Brock. Bye, Nolan. Bye, um, Brandon. By Owen, by Keely. <laughs> She's got children. <laughs> I got children. Now. Thank you.